All right, guys, I'm going to do a video on polishing the stainless steel trim for your uh, Tri-5 Chevy or pretty much just about anything that has stainless steel trim on it. So what I've got here, this is just kind of the, the quick way that I do it. Uh, you know, there's guys that literally have works of art when they're finished. I just never go through that amount of work. I did on a couple pieces on this car, went through all the labor all the way through with all the different rouges and the different wheels. And I pretty much, there's not that much of a difference visually in them. And, and at the end of the day, I'm all about getting it done a little bit faster and not having my fingertips raw. So this is just what I do. And I've done a few little areas on here. These are test pass areas. If you haven't caught some of my older videos, I showed some of my stainless trim in its original state. And some of it is scratched up really bad. What happens is, you know, normally people take a car apart and they'll take all that stainless and they'll throw it in a pile on top of each other. Well, stainless steel parts will scratch the fire out of themselves. Stainless steel is a pretty hard metal. It will scratch itself so bad that it takes lots of labor to get the scratches at back out of it. So my advice to you, if you haven't torn your car apart for restoration yet, I would take, I would go to Walmart and buy a inexpensive two inch wide roll of masking tape uh, like the blue get the painters blue that way the stuff comes off clean and you know after a couple of years being on the shelf or stored away it comes off clean you don't have a mess you could use regular tape but you'll end up uh, you know if you leave it out in the heat like in your shop or something in the heat in the summer over the course of a few years that stuff will leave a residue on there when you pull the tape off which you can use just some rags and some lacquer thinner or acetone or something you can get it wiped off but the painter's blue tape is the way to go. And then you can, you know, you can put the parts in a pile and they won't scratch themselves to death. I have actually replaced a few of my trim pieces because of how bad scratch they were. Because some of them are bad gouges and it would take tons of work to get them out. If you have dings and dents in your trim, it is not that bad to go in there and repair that stuff. I usually try to find stainless steel that doesn't have dents and dings in it, but sometimes you can't. You, you're pretty much stuck and you have to get, get parts that have it. That stuff is not too bad to fix if you use a hammer. Uh, now here is one tip I will give you. I have seen and read in books, some people will take the trim. You know, if you got a dent in your trim, they will lay it on a piece of wood and they will go back and hammer that out. Well, wood is soft. So when you hammer that out on the back, you're actually going to end up with really bad high spots because the wood will give. I use steel, uh, like a dolly or the top of my vise, you know, has the flat pad on it. You could use the flat part of an anvil. That's, I would use steel because you're going to sand and polish it anyway. Now, you don't ever have to hammer the crap out of the stuff. You can sit there and work it a little bit, but... I will use a really fine file, like you can get a set of files for jewelry, and they're just those little bitty fine files, and you can really go in there and fine tune that uh, dent back down level that way, and then go through with your grades of sandpaper. But I am gonna get started here, and now again, this is just what I do. There is a thousand different ways of doing this, and everybody's different. This is just what I do to try to make it rather quick, so I don't have to spend days and days and days on stainless steel trim. All right, so what I did was I had bought some Velcro six inch DA paper and I've got a Velcro pad on my little inexpensive DA down there. But I've also got 600 grit, which is right here. And this would be for mega scratches. Now I will tell you, the harsher you go on your paper, the more time you will spend trying to get the harsher grades out. Now I never have been a big fan of using DAs on stainless trim because once you get the DA marks in there, they're hard as heck to get out. But the finer the DA paper, the, the easier it is to get out. So I'm just going to show you basically a test pass here and uh, show you how how quick this kind of is. And you got to keep in mind, I don't have a lot of professional tools and all that kind of stuff. This is always budget for me. So I do what I can with what I have. <clears throat> So what I did was I've got, this is a piece of A-pillar stainless for a two-door hardtop, probably four-door hardtop as well, 56 and 7, but this is for a 55 two-door hardtop. This 
is, is not in too bad a shape. It does have a few little scratch marks here and there. I do see a little bit of a rough area down here on the corner edge. I'm not really going to too much worry about it. But I'm going to go through here and really try to concentrate mainly on this part right here because this is the part that's visible. So this, you can only see it when the door's open. But it does have some bad marks from the factory in here from where this is, is put, you know, bent in the press from the factory. It does have some marks in it. And I will try to work on those a little bit, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it. It is a, you know, non-visible area. You'd have to really lean around there and look at it to see it. I did mock up all the trim on my car before I disassembled it. Actually disassembled it, then gapped the car, and done everything, and then I put all the trim on and did all that. It was a lot of work, but it pays off in the end when all your stuff lines up good. So what I did was I put a thousand grit piece of DA paper on here. Now, the compressor will probably kick on, and that's all you're going to be able to hear. So you're just going to have to live with it. This is real world environment, we'll call it. Now I've got a couple of pretty bad scratches I can see. I don't really feel them all that bad, so I'm going to try 1000 grit first and see what will happen. I'm just going to do it dry. A lot of guys do this wet. I just do it dry. And when the paper starts getting loaded, I will run it across my leg here. You can see the black area on my jeans here. finally decided to shut off. So that was a thousand grit on DA paper. Now I don't have any 1500 or 1200 on the DA. Normally I would go to a thousand, 1200, 1500 on DA paper. Then I'd move on by hand. Uh, the further you go in papers, the more this will polish. This will basically end up getting a pretty good shine where you can see yourself on it before you even take it to the buffer, which is really the best way to go for an instant shine. If you leave sand scratches and cloudiness in it, it will not buff out on the buffer without hours of labor trying to remove them. You can eventually get them, but if you want to do it rather quick, it's best to try to get it knocked out in paper. So I don't have any 1200 grit paper at all. I do have some 1500 here, wet or dry sheets. So I've just went over it with a thousand. Now I'm going to go over it with 1500 by hand. And what this will do is it will remove, if you're watching that right there, this will remove those little, you know, the DA lines in it, basically. This will basically put straighter lines in it, which is a little bit harder to see than DA marks.
So I've already got a pretty good shine out of that just at 1500 grit stage now. But my biggest thing was trying to get the bad scratches out, which the 1000 actually did it, but sometimes you got to go to 600. I may have a piece somewhere that I may have to do that too. So I'm just going to try to finish this up with the 15. Some of these pieces I'm not 100% in love with, but it's the best I could find at the time. But they'll work. I'm not going for absolute perfection in every square inch of the wing window stuff on the stainless trim, because there's a lot of pieces of stainless trim just to make up the wing window area on a hard top. And these are not perfect pieces stamped from the stamping. These things have all kinds of indents and wrinkles and all kinds of stuff for being stamped. So if you wanted to make these pieces absolutely perfect, be prepared to spend a lot of time for perfection. I'm not going through that much, that much kind of work on it. If you do see uh, scratch marks, uh, you, you need to go back and do them again with the DA until you get them out. Don't keep continuing because you're never going to get it. <clears throat> there are many, many guys out there that uh, they do this stuff for a living and they are awesome at it. This is not something that I would want to do for a living. I don't have the hands or the fingers for it. but I can get some pretty decent results right here in my garage with very, very cheap tools. Another thing I will tell you is about your, your buffer, which is what I'm using is a bench grinder, a standard bench grinder from Harbor Freight. Uh, the real deal stainless polishing buffer or polish or, or grinder, whatever you want to call it, is kind of a low speed, high torque. Um, if they're really fast, it tends to heat this up really quick and can warp it. It also uh, can get bound up or you know jerk stuff out of your hands, so you, you need to make sure you do have a good hold on these and always wear gloves. The other thing about it is it will cook the rouge to the wheel, so you need to clean your wheel pretty often if you're using a standard RPM, you know, pretty high RPM bench grinder, which is what I'm using. I do have my eye on one at Harbor Freight. I seen it about a year ago and they, they advertise it as, you know, for polishing and you put your, you know, cotton or muslin buffs on there or whatever. I just, I haven't had the money to spend on, a, on the buffer because I can get what I'm using to work. I polished a lot of trim on that bench grinder over there. That is an old one, but it still works. I did get a bigger one with a longer, uh, snouts on it, uh, used from a guy, it's an old one, and I thought it was going to be awesome, but it was way faster RPM than the one I got, so it was really not doing the job. <clears throat> now again, this video is not necessarily a how-to on how you're exactly supposed to do it. I've had quite a few subscribers ask me if I would do a video on this, so that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> there are better ways and faster ways, and I don't know if they're faster, but they're just better ways of doing it than what I'm doing. More professional, we'll say. I can show you right here, you can see, and you see all them, these marks through here. This is from the factory, from the the stamping when they actually put the, the stainless in there and then they stamped it out. They just put all these little gouge marks in there. And it has a pretty good line groove in it right here and that's just factory, that's the way it is. Now you could go through there if you wanted perfection, hammer all that out and do all that finish work on that backside piece of that. But for me, I ain't gonna mess with it. This is around the backside of the wing window assembly and I just don't care. I, I will say this has a little spot here, a couple little spots right here that I don't like. 
So I may end up hammering these out. It just kind of depends. I'm to the point on the car where I just want to get it done. And, you know, spending hours upon hours upon hours on one little part, which is normally what I do, it just drags the project on. This is nine years in this car so far, but I have broke off of it and worked on other cars because there's there's times when you get frustrated and you don't really want to mess with stuff, you know. I, I still want to work on cars, I just I get tired of that one car, I get burnt out, and I will move on to another car to work on. It kind of keeps the ball rolling on the projects, but every once in a while it's good to take a take a break. Down there in that counter sunk area on top of that where a screw will go. All right, so this is uh, 1500 grit here. Now I'm going to move on to 2000 grit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this area right here because I may go back and work on this, but I just want to concentrate on this one area real quick just to kind of show you guys what it'll do. Now you might be able to see it. In the, in the camera when I start sanding on this, that this will get a little bit shinier again, just with the 2000. I think most guys do this wet, but for me, the, the dry is just fine. You know, it does clog up the paper a little bit, but I just wipe it across my old blue jeans and it cleans it out good enough. So you can already get, see I got a shine on that just from doing that by hand. It's very, very similar to the way if, if your wife has her fingernails done at a fingernail parlor, they will use different grades of files to get your fingernails you know, polished basically if you wanted to do that. I don't even know. It seems like the, the guy that I learned from, it seems like 2000 grit was the furthest he went. And that's, you, you could do that just fine. I can also tell you if you're not into making your stainless, you know, perfect and making it super awesome, you can use this stuff. Just smear some of that on the part and buff it on a buffing wheel. And that mother's bag aluminum polish will bring a shine out on it if you don't care if it has scratches in it. <clears throat> Stainless trim makes a huge difference on a car, whether it's painted or not. If that stuff's super shiny, it dulls out over time. If it's super shiny, then it looks like a million bucks on there. I was told by an old guy a long time ago, years ago when I was a kid, uh, you can have a $500 paint job and put all new chrome and polish stainless steel on it and it'll look like a $10,000 paint job. But if you had a $10,000 paint job and you put all your old nasty trim on there that's dull and your old pitted chrome, it looks like a $500 paint job. That is uh, actually a, a pretty good way of thinking about it. So you can already see the, the shine in that. And I probably don't even need to go any further than that. But I do have a piece of $2,500 I'm going to go ahead and do. I really didn't spend a lot of time on that, but I think I'll go ahead and polish on it and see what it looks like. Again, it's on the back side of the wing window frame, so I don't really care.
Now keep in mind as I'm showing you this, I am not building a Riddler car. I am building an amateur built, garage built, driveway built car. So I realize there's other ways of doing this to get better a better job. I'm just showing you on the cheap and rather quick how you can get a shine out of this stuff. So here it is, uh, pretty much. Now you'll notice sometimes when you're sanding, if you get that sandpaper, just kind of lightly scuff it across there, it'll put some lines in it, but it'll, it'll buff out of it. Okay, now we'll move on to the buffer. All right, so I've got a polishing wheel on here, which is from Harbor Freight. Now there is all kinds of rouges you can get. There's emery to start off with and all that kind of stuff. I am going straight to green rouge. Green is usually stainless steel and I'm just going straight to it because I did all that pretty much finish work like that to start off with. And these things are dirty. <clears throat> so here's another tip I will give you. When you go to clean your buffing wheel, don't use a screwdriver because you're polishing stainless steel, you're not polishing steel. What will happen is if you use just a regular old steel screwdriver on here, you will contaminate that wheel with steel and when you go to polish a harder metal like stainless steel, it will actually scratch it and leave a dull finish. So if you're working on stainless steel, clean that with stainless steel. What I've got here is an old headlight bucket I got from a salvage years ago that was, you know, pretty messed up. Uh, I said headlight bucket, I think. This is a headlight trim ring. It's probably off of five, six, seven, whatever. But it has all these little sharp edges, which I pretty much polished round on it. But it has little sharp edges, and that's what I use to clean my polishing wheel. Now, this is just green rouge. Uh, this is, you know, probably... I might have got this from eBay because I think Harbor Freight was out last time I went to get some, so I just ordered it off of eBay. I don't know what brand this is, but anyway, this is just Green Rouge. All right, so when that wheel is spinning, you want to make sure that that wheel is spinning off of edges. Don't polish it. Don't, like, don't stick that up there and try to go this way because it will rip it out of your hand. Make sure you have both hands on it at all times with a good firm grip so it doesn't rip it out of your hand. But you want to polish it with the way that wheel is going. Let me slow this down here and see what I'm talking about. I need to get my glasses too. Slow this down here. All right, so the wheel is spinning counterclockwise to you looking at it. So it's spinning counterclockwise. So I want to polish this trim this way. If that wheel was going clockwise and I stuck that flat edge down there with that spin in that way, it's going to try to do that number. So. You have to turn this at all the directions to go with that wheel. Like this, you'd want to do it that way. And, you know, you can do it this way. You can do it just about anything. Just be aware of your corners and edges, these little sharp edges that that wheel can rip or bend or whatever. This thing will rip stuff out of your hand, especially a high RPM bench grinder like I'm using. Also, it's probably not a smart idea to have a stainless steel wheel on there bristle brush thing. I can't even think of what it's called. Or a bench grinding stone because if you get your part in there it'll get into it. Now this we, this table is on casters so for big stuff I will have to move this out but I have so much crap in here right now that I can't move this out. That's why I'm working on little parts because I've got room to get in here. So when I do long pieces like window trim for the back glass and all that really long I will pull this out away from the wall. That way I've got plenty of area to, to work it. So I'm going to get started here. I guess I didn't bring my glasses out here. I'll just do one little area and I'll show you.
just using the soft side of a microfiber. <clears throat> anyway, there's the there's the trim on that side. So this is it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Now normally, you know, after I get a car uh, put back together and I go back to do the final detail and polish on the car, it's all together. I will usually use a small little piece of microfiber that I cut off with a pair of scissors and I will put some Mother's Mag Aluminum Polish and I will go back over the stainless trim with it on the car because you're going to get your fingerprints on it. Sometimes if you have rough spots on your hands, uh, like you know a callus or something, it might put a light scratch on that stainless that you can see so that Mother's will help polish that out. But uh, that is pretty much what you end up with and that's just you know a pretty good pretty good job on that for no more time than I spent on it. Uh, it you know to make the piece perfection you just have to spend a lot of time on it and I'm just not going to do it. This is the main piece you'll see so that's all I really care about. Of course I will polish it you know what I mean but I just wanted to get this spot uh, done to show you. Now I'll go over it again uh, I'll go over this really good but I'm kind of thinking I'm going to fix those spots but and then I'll go back over this again, which will make it nice again. But most guys that do this for a living, they spend a lot more time and prep, and they do a really awesome job. It's, it's really an art form is what it is. And, you, you know, you get what you pay for in that type of deal. But for a garage environment like myself, and which is a lot of my subscribers are in the same boat, you got to do this stuff yourself. You can't pay a professional. But you can get outstanding results that way. But... The Mother's Mag and Aluminum Polish will pretty much do the same thing. You know what, I'll show you that actually, and I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and put on that wheel because I think I can clean it off there. I will say, don't use different rouges on the same wheels. If you're gonna do a different rouge, like a black emery is one that you would normally use to start off with, and that usually gets out bad stuff. I've just never had good luck with it, and it's probably because I'm using real inexpensive stuff. But right here I can show you. I keep all of my wheels, other than there's one old piece of crap in there that I don't use anymore. I keep them all in their own bag and they're all labeled with the magic marker. That way nothing gets contaminated. So this is emery uh, that you would use. You normally use that first. And there's the, the black rouge there. I even have a little round one. And then there's another color that goes in the middle and I can't remember what it is here. I got it. See, it shows white for number three. Brown is number two. So brown rouge, uh, number two. And again, like I said, I did this to some of the trim that I've already put on the car, and I pretty much got the same results doing it. Just sand it, polish it with green, and call it a day. So I'm good with it. I'm very, very pleased with it. I mean, that looks pretty nice. And I can tell you a way to test this stuff especially if you're in your garage with your lights in your garage and you really look at that with the light reflection in there and if you see cloudy spots in that light keep working on it but like this I can see the reflection of that light all of it in there in very good detail so this piece is very good usually stainless will look a little bit better outside in the sun so if you've got it really good in your garage under the lights it's going to be a nice a nice finish but Again, most guys that do this and are professionals at this, they go a lot further, but it shows when they're done. This stuff looks like it was chromed at a chrome shop. So it just depends on your budget, how much time you want to spend. For me, I don't want to spend that much time on it because I hate polishing stainless steel. I hate working on stainless steel, period. But that'll give you the rundown, guys. Uh, now I know there is a difference in muslin and cotton buffs. Um, I am not even sure what these are, to be honest with you. Now this one is, this is what they call a loose buff. It's not stitched, so this is all open, you know, a little, I don't know if you can see that where I've got the tripod set up. This one's, you know, not sewn, it's just open, and this is very soft. So this one may be cotton, I just, I don't remember. Uh, but I usually just use, I used to use the same polishing wheel for everything. Now like this one is a, Spiral sewn or whatever they call it sewn, but it's sewn together. You can see all the stitches in it and stuff, but there is muslin and cotton and I don't know that it honestly if it even matters, but it, it's pretty amazing to use a finishing pad 
just for finish on that and get that kind of finish out of it. You know what I mean? So I'm good with it. If you want to go further, you can though. All right, guys, I'm going to show you this here. This is another piece of the wing window trim that will go on that hard top. This is untouched. So this is how dull gray they, they get over time. So, and they got scratches in them and everything. This has a few little deep scratches, not super deep, but there's a few spots like right here, some nick marks. So I'm gonna have to go in here and work on this a little bit to get this perfect. But I'm gonna show you if you don't really care about making these absolutely perfect, how quick of a shine you can get if you have a buffing wheel and you have some Mother's Mag Aluminum Polish. Now I will say, <clears throat> if you're gonna do it this way, this is a good thing to do. Uh, if you have contamination on your part that you're getting ready to buff, like overspray or you know, tree sap or whatever, you go to buff that, it's going to get stuck in your wheel and contaminate it. And, you know, you can clean your buffing wheel, obviously, but you can use some 4 aught steel wool and just go over this because I can feel stuff on here. Could be paint overspray. I mean, there's no telling. Just ground in dirt or whatever. So just go over that and kind of make sure it's clean. Now, I'm not going to sand this or nothing. I'm just going to show you, which I will go back and sand this and work this over. I'm just doing it to show you a feel of it and I don't feel any rough contaminants on it. So at this point, I never cross contaminate my wheels, but I'm going to do this because I think I'll be able to clean it. I'm going to take a little bit of mother's here. I'm just going to smear all over this thing. This is just regular old mother's mag aluminum polish that you can get it wherever, you know, parts store, Walmart, whatever. This is actually the very first time I got introduced to polishing stainless steel. This is what one guy showed me. So you can do this. Because most people don't care about people getting right up on your stainless trim with their eyeballs two inches away from it looking for imperfections. But, I mean, you can see that spot right there compared to the rest of that, how gray that looks. So that is just hitting it without sanding on it. And that's mothers. So mothers will, will clean that up. You know, for a driver. If you're just doing a daily driver and you don't really care about perfection, you can do that and don't, don't worry about buying a rouge and all that kind of stuff. But you can get that uh, quick of a result from that. So something you can do. Normally when I, uh, this is usually what I do is this way, just with the, the rouge, uh, the green rouge with a, a soft buff pad. And then when I'm done, I will go back with Mother's on a piece of microfiber and I'll rub it real hard one way and then wipe it off with a clean microfiber on the soft side. And then I'll usually put the parts away. Sometimes I tape them up, sometimes I wrap them in t-shirts or socks or whatever I've got just to put them away. Newspaper. <clears throat> but you can do that. Now I did learn a lesson a long time ago when the guy showed me this. I think I was probably like 19 or 20 years old when he showed me this at his shop. Uh, he showed me this actually on a door point, a little door spear point for a 210 two-door post 55 I had. And he, he goes, watch this. And he walked over there, put mothers on it, run it across his buffing wheel, showed it to me, and I was blown away. I was all, like, oh, that's awesome. Later that night, uh, I went through and polished all the stainless on that 55 that I had off of it at the time. And then I grabbed the old door seal plates. Those are aluminum. With the same pad and everything, I went through and I buffed those aluminum door sill plates and they actually look pretty decent you know they were dinged up and stuff but they were shiny and then after that I went back and did some more stainless and I couldn't get that stainless steel to shine like it did when I first started and I didn't understand why so I went and got the guy and he come over there and he he told me he said you do not polish aluminum and then polish stainless with the same wheel because the aluminum soft it gets stuck in the wheel and it will scuff the stainless and make it dull where it won't shine so he ended up cleaning that wheel really, really hard. And he actually has, I thought I bought one, but I can't find it. I thought I bought one, but I call it a rake. It's a little handheld wooden handle thing and it has like little teeth all over it and it's called a rake. But 
That's what he had, and he cleaned that wheel off really, really good. And it took a while to get it cleaned off, but then it started polishing back shiny again on the stainless. So that's why I said don't contaminate your buffing wheels and pads, which I just contaminated my number four rouge pad with mothers, but uh, that stuff will come out. Now, something that this does, this polish with a, with a fast speed bench grinder like I am using, I don't know what RPM this thing is, this thing really gets to moving. It says, 3450 RPM on here. So this will actually burn it or cook it to that buffing wheel. So if you're gonna do this, you need to clean the wheel pretty regularly. Don't try to do one of your long quarter moldings in one setting because it'll end up getting to the point where it doesn't really shine that well because the you'll feel hard spots on the on the polishing wheel. It'll have stuff burnt to it basically. So you want to clean that off. But just trying to give you as many tips and advice as I can. And again, I am not a professional stainless steel polisher. This is just what I do. And I know some guys, they, they're they way more perfectionist than I am on this stuff. But if you want to do a nice job on this, you can buy all the rouges, all the wheels, and do a good job on it. If you have a, you know, a low, part, low RPM, high torque motor, which I do not. Uh, I basically, all my life, I've had to do the best with what I got. And... Sometimes I pick up tips along the way that has worked for me. And if it works for me, I'll pass it on. So hopefully it helps you guys. Thanks for watching. All right, so I got this piece here that uh, I showed, you know, sanding and polishing the side piece here, which is mainly the visible piece. This goes around on the back side. You don't really see it unless the door's open, but you'd really have to kind of pull your head around behind the wing window to, to see the front of this. It kind of goes on on the driver's side, it would go on like that. So when the door's open, you know, you'd, you'd really have to pull your head around to see this. Now from the factory, this is, I've seen this on every one of them, it has a little line creased in it right here. It's just the way it is. And they usually have real bad, you know, scuff marks through there. So I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and work on these scuff marks pretty good and get them, you know, the best I can. But this has, has a pretty good dented up area right through here and right above here. Now, this is a countersink hole and that trim has raised metal back here. So this is gonna be a little bit on the tough side to mess with, but I'm gonna to try to see if I can get this out and, and repair it. Now, this is just how I do it. So I've got a little metal dolly here and I've got it laying down so it's nice and flat but this is actually curved in, so this is gonna be a little bit tough. Now, the only hammer I have to work on this, I'd, lo I'd love to have a set for, to do this. It's a little bit smaller stuff, but this is a, just a regular old out of my you know, hammer dolly set, but it has a, a soft edge, nothing sharp because I've sanded on this before, but I'll go in here and try to use this spot here just to kind of knock this out a little bit. Now, again, if you used wood, it would knock it, the, the stainless would go further because the wood would give. So it'd put high spots in it. So you'd be kind of chasing your tail and then you got to worry about tin canning, which little stuff like this, you know, probably wouldn't be as bad as like a quarter pan. But. So what I did was I took some mother's polish and I kind of polished on this back here a little bit, just, you know, just to basically where I can see the spots and there's a pretty good high spot right there. So I'm going to try to work this a little bit, and you don't need to hammer the fire out of it. And it was hard to see even with it polished. Try to get the light in it just right so I can see what the heck I'm doing here.
So what I've got here are some fingernail files that are really worn out. <laughs> and I'm going to attempt this with this just to see, kind of block it, I guess you'd say, just to kind of see where I'm at here. the file here. Yeah, it's, this thing's curved so it's really kind of tough to get to. This is a fine jeweler's file that you can get in a, a set. You can find it on eBay, Amazon, or whatever. And this is what jewelers would use to, you know, work on rings and watches and whatever. Do a little X pattern here. And that crown on that's really causing a Causing a troublesome spot here. I don't think it's going to be perfect, but it'll be a little bit better than it was. My nail files were a little bit better shape. These things are worn slap out, man. So they sell a set at Walmart. Like this one, you can see it says clean. This one doesn't say anything. This one says shine. This one says condition. And I've had good luck fixing little bitty trim pieces with just these three and then finish it out on the wheel. But these are so worn out that they're... <laughs> there's nothing left of them anymore. I may have to do this just by hand with sheets of paper. I don't have anything finer or more coarse for my DA other than 600, and that's not really enough yet to, to get going on it. I need to work some of these scratches and gouges out with something firmer, like 220 probably, something like that, 320. It ain't going to be perfect. Yeah, 
Yeah, this thing's so wore out, it ain't doing nothing. Let's see if I can find some paper. All right, so I've used a little bit of uh, just some 220 grit paper here. And I'm sitting here working this. Now, I did put blue tape on the spot that I've already polished and made look nice for the video. But Anyway, this is it's crowned this way and it's crowned that way, so it's kind of a mess. When I hammered it out, it kind of made a big high spot here. Which doesn't really matter because the thing is so rough anyway with all the, the indents and the lines and the wrinkles and all that. It's, it doesn't matter to me. Especially because of the location where it is on the car. I just, I don't care. But anyway, I'm just trying to get all the file marks out and all that stuff. And going I'm going one direction here. 220 grit on the finger and just work in that area. And I did go ahead and work. Uh, those lines that were in this a little bit, which I can see them pretty much all in it. So I might as well do this number, I guess. It's amazing how stainless steel is so hard because you'll start sanding on it and you'll sand and sand and sand and just you'll be amazed at how long it takes, even with some pretty coarse paper, to get the scratches out of it. I mean, this stuff sucks. Couple of wrinkled areas up in there too. Trying to get it in the light here where I can see it. Yeah, it looks pretty, and it's pretty ripply wavy here, but it's good enough. It's around the corner, I really don't care. I mean, if I wanted to make this perfect, I'd spend a lot of time on it. I'm just not gonna do it because of the area that's located on the car. Now I'm gonna try, normally I'd go to 320 and then probably 400 grit and then go to six. I'm gonna see if this 600, We'll get that out of there. That's a pretty good jump for stainless steel. But I got nothing to lose to try anyway. <laughs>
fine. That was the compressor shut back off. <laughs> All right, so I got 1500 grit paper here, dry, going one direction. Way better. I mean, it's, you know, there's a little indent right there I probably missed when I was hammering Dolly in. But it doesn't have the big dents in it now, at least. It looks way better. If I was going for perfection, I would work and work and work and work that, but I'm just not going to mess with it. It's it's in a area of the car that is, is not front and center. Now, as far as the trim on the car that is visible, like the side trim and the paint dividers and the belt line and the windshield and back glass trim, that stuff I will spend a lot of time on. <clears throat> Mainly just wanted to do a, a fairly quick video for you guys to show you how I do my stainless because I've been asked by so many people. And again, this is not how you should do it. This is just how I do it because I've been asked how I do it. And there's always that professional that's going to say, well, you should use this and you should have done that. I can have this thing looking like chrome plated. Perfect. And there's still going to be that person that will go in there and say, well, you should have done this and you should have done that. Regardless of how good it turns out. I'm going to move on to two now. And again, you can already kind of see the shine that it's getting by just going over it with dry paper. That's why those, a brand new set of those fingernail file, or fingernail, whatever these things are called files but what I always called them but you can get the the different grades of paper to work these little small areas in it they actually work remarkably well now they don't last very long so if you get a bunch of little areas like this it's hard to work on hard to get to those things work good for that but they're not gonna they're not gonna do your entire car before they're worn out you know what I mean
branches right there. All right, so that is the area of the little, uh, which I missed a little dent right there, but I don't really care because it's got this line down it from, you know, from the factory, and it's got all these wrinkles in it. It kind of is camouflaged a little bit, I guess, and it's not perfect. There's more areas that need a little bit more fine sanding, but it, it's good enough, especially for the area it's in. Like if it's an exterior part of the trim on the car that is visible, I will go back and do it until it's real nice, but with this piece being so stuffed back up in there, I don't really care, but that is a uh, that is a good enough part for the location on the car, anyway. I can live with that. Well, at least it looks better than having them dents in it now. <laughs> Doesn't take long to get your fingerprints back in it. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video off. And I'm going to wash my hands, get some of this stuff off, and I need to take my dog out. I am going to go ahead, however, and put this back in. These dry out. Your rouge will dry out. You don't want it to be dry. So uh, keep it like in a Ziploc bag closed. That way it keeps dirt and dust from getting in there, and it also keeps it from drying out and getting hard. When it's hard, it tends to scratch. I'll lay my glasses there, and I'll forget where they're at. Thanks for watching.